Welcome also to the Monday after we got one hour sucked out of our lives just like that. And we're gonna be working on a new writing prompt today. Happy birthday to my niece, Vanessa. Good morning and welcome to Monday, the first day of this full week of five days of getting things done in my classroom, but all leading up to an amazing weekend that I'm gonna have this upcoming weekend that I'll talk to you a little bit about later. And welcome also to the Monday after we got one hour sucked out of our lives just like that. Yep, thank you Daylight Savings Time and I'm so sorry for all the noise, but as you may know, the students sit outside of our classroom and they're being really loud this morning. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, <laughs> in a few minutes, I do have to let the students in and get my day started. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to go check out what's going on out there. So let me go ahead and do that. And I will talk to you all later. Hello everyone, I'm now coming to you at the end of the day and that noise in the morning that I mentioned, it was just the kids being loud and having some fun while screaming which is not always a good idea but that's what was happening no one was in danger all right so the day has been a day packed with lots of learning and opportunities for exploring different things especially in math today we did mixed measurements and i thought they were going to need a little bit more time to get a hold of it since we're regrouping like quartz into cups etc like i mentioned earlier but they actually got a grasp of it really quickly. They thought it was pretty simple. We went over the questions that they needed to do, and that was that. And in science, we reviewed how matter changes, and we kind of reviewed questions that they're going to have in their test. So tomorrow morning, after they do their morning warm up, they're going to go ahead and take their test for that unit. And Ms. Guzman is gonna be teaching two lessons tomorrow one in math and another one in science since we're starting a new topic in science trying to catch up but it's going to be a lot of fun hopefully i can get a couple of video clips here and there of what she does with the students because it's always nice to see some hands-on science and the kids enjoying it so hopefully we'll be able to get a couple of those clips in there for you so that you can observe them having fun with science and we went ahead and continued working on our woman i admire paragraph this morning i finished my paragraph which i'll show you shortly and we also talked about malala yousafzai i learned that the kids didn't really know much about her since they're going to be reading about her this week for their homework which i'll also share with you and i showed them the brain pop video on malala as well as one of the interviews that she did so they can learn a little bit about what she stands for and the importance of making sure that everyone has access to the education that they deserve all right so let me go ahead and show you a couple of things that the students were working on today along with what they're going to be working on in their homework this week and then i'm going to get going because it's already time for me to go so let's go ahead and do that now so first let me show you the woman i admire flipbook paragraph for the person that i'm writing about which is may jameson i shared about this last week i had already written my three details about her i then wrote my opening and closing sentences and then I'm going to skip the success criteria because it's just check boxes. I need to check them off. But here is my paragraph that I put together. And of course, it looks a little bit different from the other sections in the book because I added some transitions. And then I wanted to add a sentence extra here or there. But as you can see, my paragraph goes all the way down to the bottom, starting with my introduction, my details in the middle, and my conclusion sentence. And now the only thing I have to do is draw her here. Hopefully I can show you that tomorrow. And then color it and make it all nice, just like the students have done it. And once I put the students' examples up, I'll show you again and yeah this is what we have been working on for women's history month and choosing different women to research on so that we can write a paragraph about why we admire them now for homework this week the students have another weekly math review log this one comes from one stop teacher shop 
I did the editable one where I deleted what she had here because she had already had some area and perimeter questions, which we haven't gone over yet because that's our last chapter, which we will start next week. So I just went ahead and added these measurement questions to go along with everything else for chapter 12 that we have been working on. And then the students have questions from all the other previous chapters so that they can do a spiral review of those skills. Now for their reading slash writing homework that they have this week, I also got some passages from Scholastic. And again, I had access to these passages from having a subscription to Scholastic News before, and I just saved them as a PDF so that I can have access to them whenever I wanted them. This one talks about different ways that people help others. So it talks about three different children or young kids that have done something to help other people. So they had one, two, here's the article on Malala, and it goes over to the back. And here's a third one. And after they read those, they have some reading questions that they're going to be answering based on the readings. So they have seven different questions in different formats that are close to the ones that they're going to see on their state test. And then I created this prompt, which the students have to write an informative essay to identify the problem that each kid addressed and how they tackled that problem. And then they just briefly summarize what other kids can learn about helping others from each of those kids that they mentioned. So they have their planning sheet. Again, they have the line side and then they have the writing side so that they can create their plan. And then they have three sheets of lined paper that I have made myself in the past. And that's basically what the students have for homework this week. To give students some help in writing their essays, I went ahead to the class story section of our class dojo and I included this helping others informative essay model. And basically this goes over the analytical writing process. It goes over APT 1, 2, 3. Right now it's loading. That's why we're waiting for it to come up. Hopefully it should come up. Let's wait a few seconds. And here it is. So basically they scroll through. So they have the analytical writing process. They have what is APT 123. And then I actually show them how they should unwrap their prompt with APT 123. This is a two part prompt. So they're going to go ahead and gather their evidence. So I pretty much have given them the layout for this. So they're going to write what the articles are. So I gave them an idea for a content frame and then what the problem and solution of each article is and what kids can learn from each of these kids according to how they helped others. Then I went ahead and gave them an example of the spaceship graphic organizer to organize their essays, going over what is their first reason second reason or third reason, in this case, idea, not reason. And they go over elaborating on what that person did and the text evidence to support that. And I gave them three different examples of how they can start their introduction. This one does not have the body paragraphs yet. Now, I don't think I went over this with you all last week, but here is the model that I gave to them last week for their video game model set. Last week, they had to write an opinion essay on whether video games are good or bad for kids. So it has the same thing, the analytical writing process, APT 123, and then it goes over what opinion essay is, I told them how they should set up the evidence, the gathering the evidence side of their planning sheet, and then their planning essay, their essay template for planning their essay, what they should include because it was also a two-part prompt. And then I gave them three examples of the pro for video games are good for the introduction, three examples for the con of video games are not good for their introduction, and I gave them three body paragraphs for the pro showing them color-coded what each part represented so they could have a model of what they should include in their writing. So here's the second body paragraph, the third body paragraph, and then I went ahead and gave them some transitional phrases that they can use and some ways to start their conclusions, as well as three examples of conclusions for video games are good, which is the pro. So I did do that and I provided that for them in our class dojo section of class stories. And that is what the students are gonna be working on this week. Now, one thing I forgot to share with you last week, I had written this on the board, but I forgot to show you the typed version that I did for them to show in PowerPoint on the interactive board. 
And then from here, I'm going to work on including this on an actual checklist that they can check off and attach to their essay. But this is the essay grading rubric that I used last week as they were finishing revising their kids and sports essay, which was an opinion essay. And I wanted to show them exactly what I wanted in each section of their essay to make sure that they addressed all of the key components that make a really good high scoring paper. So I just wanted to show you that this is something that I went ahead and created as well. Now, one last thing that I wanted to share with you was not this past weekend, but the previous weekend, I forgot to share this last week. I went to BJ's, which is a wholesale club, and I found four new who was or what was books that I wanted to add to my classroom library. So let me show you those titles right now. So these are the four titles that I found in the book section of my BJ store. So this was What Was the Underground Railroad? Who was Coretta Scott King? Who is Barack Obama? And who was Aretha Franklin? So I thought that these would be great additions to my classroom library and maybe the students will enjoy reading and learning more about these influential people or historical events. So yeah, love these little who was and what was series. All right, so that's basically all I have to share with you today, Monday, and now I'll take you on to Tuesday. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday. So it's early in the morning. I'm about getting ready to let the students in in about five or 10 minutes, and I need to put their do-nows on the desk, and we're gonna be working on a new writing prompt today. For the entire week, we're gonna actually work on it together, so it's not like a time test. That will be on Friday to get the students all ready to go for their writing test, which is, in a short, three weeks, and that's including our spring break. So I have the remaining of this week, all next week, and then that's it for preparing the students for the writing test. So I'm gonna get my day started, it and I'll see you later. Okay, okay everybody count no. down from 10. It's like the little baby. 10, 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Now the end of the day and as you saw in the previous clips the students had an amazing time engaging in the science lesson that Ms. Guzman taught them today on forces and motion and speed and they just were able to conduct a lab they were able to see a demonstration. She showed them a really cool roller coaster simulator that showed how the roller coaster goes from potential energy to kinetic energy, back to potential energy and kinetic energy. Super cool. And if I find the links that she used for those, I'll be sure to show you. I can't show you now because I'm not sure the websites that she used, but I can ask her tomorrow and I'll include it in the vlog. And then she showed them a video on YouTube of someone going in a roller coaster after showing the simulator and asking the students, what energy is happening here and they will yell potential what energy is happening here kinetic so it was an absolutely amazing engaging lesson miss guzman you did an amazing job as always and she also taught the math lesson this afternoon which had the students look at different tables that had a number on one side and another number on the other and basically they were looking for the relationship they had for measurements for example one chart may have a one in the first column and in the column next to it it might have a 36 and then a two and then a 72 so they had to be able to title each column and for that one it was yards and inches so one yard has 36 inches two yards is 72 inches etc so they had different kinds of measurements that they needed to be able to complete the chart by writing the title of the columns to symbolize what was the measurement that was being compared in either column so that was great and this morning we were working on writing so I'm going to show you the essay that we're working on in class together so it's not a time to practice test it's just one that we're going together so that we can review informative essay writing so let me show you that now all right so this is our essay booklet it looks just like the practice test which i tried to make it look also a little bit similar to the real essay except that on the front it's going to have a different sheet 
when they take the real test. But here are our sources. And the first thing I have the students do, like I mentioned before, is skip the sources and go straight to the prompt. So we read the prompt and we unwrapped it using APT 1, 2, 3. And we filled out the APT based on that. So they're writing to inform what are the differences between hand gliding and paragliding. So once we understood what the prompt was about, we went back and we read our sources. The first time we read our sources, we were just reading them to get information, to be just informed as to what the passages were about. And then the second time we read the sources, we started doing selective underlining and annotations so that we understood what it is that we were reading. Now, being that we were reading it for the second time, we were able to start gathering our evidence. And for this essay, since we're doing compare and contrast, we're comparing hand gliders to paragliders and looking at the differences, not just the similarities, only the differences, but it doesn't matter, we can still list the similarities. We were able to gather our evidence and for my evidence, I decided to use the double bubble, but I actually ended up giving students three different options on how to gather their evidence on the line part of their planning sheet. One was of course the double bubble, the other one was the content frame, which lists the two articles and the other columns were dealing with the history, how it's designed, how it works, and the safety. And the last option I gave them to gather their evidence was doing a T-chart. Now, a T-chart usually works for opinion, but it worked for this one because we're comparing two things. So on one side, they could just put all the information about hang gliding, and on the other side, they could put all the information about paragliding. So I decided to use the double bubble. So as I read the passage and I gathered information that I knew was different from the paraglider because I had already read the sources the first time, I went ahead and added that information here. And one thing I did with the students is I asked them, what title should I give this bubble? So as you can see, we started to group like ideas together. So this is design, design, design. This is history. This is how it works, how it works. This goes with history, but this is a similarity because that's how the double bubble works. In the middle is the similarities on the outside are the differences and then we started doing the same thing for paragliding but we didn't get to finish going through the annotations of the paraglider the only part that we got to was the history so tomorrow we'll finish rereading the design of the paraglider and then we'll go into how a paraglider flies and the safety as well and once we have our evidence gathered then on the back the students will create their spaceship graphic organizer to organize what their body paragraphs will be about I've already kind of told them that based on the information that we're gathering, it looks like we have a lot of information to contrast both the hang glider and the paraglider based on their design and how they work. So I already told them that my planning sheet is probably gonna look like one of my ideas is gonna be about how they're designed and the other one is how they work. So that is basically what we're writing this week. And once they're done writing that, we are going to write part by part the whole entire essay so I will model the introduction and they'll write their introduction. I'll model the body paragraphs and they'll write their body paragraphs and the same thing with the conclusion. And that will be it for the essay that we're working on in class. So that is our informative essay writing. My plan is to have this essay finished by tomorrow. I think we can do it. We'll have two hours in the morning to work on it. And the Spanish teacher already told me that unfortunately he's being pulled to cover another class. So we will not have Spanish tomorrow, which is fine. The students have been asking for me to show them the movie Racing Extension because I used it for one part of science earlier in the year. I showed them a clip from the movie, but because they want to watch it, then they can have one hour tomorrow where we're watching a science based film on extinction and different ways that humans impact our environment. So we'll be doing that instead of Spanish and then we'll have lunch and after lunch we're working with reviewing different things in math because on Thursday is Pi Day and the reading and the writing that we're going to be doing on Thursday are going to be related to Pi Day and the math that we're going to be doing is they're going to be taking their topic 12 assessment and that'll be it for Thursday, along with the other activities that I have planned for that day, which you'll have to stay tuned and see. All right, so that's all I have for you for today. And now I'm going to take you on to Wednesday. 
But wait, before I move you on to Wednesday, I forgot to share something that I started doing with my students this morning. I got this idea from Fantastically in Fourth on Instagram. I'll link her down below. I think that's her name, but I'll scroll it down here so that you know who it is that came up with this idea. But then I saw my friend Vanessa from my second grade life, and she is going to do it as well with her students to motivate them to get their I Ready lessons done and passed. So I decided to go ahead and do an I Ready March Madness because we're in March Madness right now for basketball, and a lot of teachers are jumping on with this idea for I ready so I created mine as well but mine is not on any board in my classroom because I just don't have any available wall space right now but I do have a PowerPoint and I can project it on my board and every week it will be projected so that the students can see the stats so let me show you what I came up with this is how my I Ready March Madness board looks like, and I can project it nice and big on my board. Now, obviously, I did change my students' names to numbers so I can protect their privacy, but this is pretty much how it looks. Each student was grouped with a random student. I actually used the I Ready Toolkit, the random picker, to select random students to go against each student, and then... I looked up the report from last week on iReady because last week was the first week of March, technically. So whoever out of these two students got the most lessons passed, now that's combining reading and math, they got to move on to the next round, which is this week right now. And then from these two students, one student got moved, and now these two students are going to go against each other. Now, because I have 20 students and I wanted to separate them into five groups of two on either side, I was going to have an odd number of groups here. So that's why over here we have three students. So I took one winner from here, one winner from here, and one winner from here. And now these three students will go against each other and only one student will make it onto the green section and only one student will make it onto the green section here. The same thing on this side. Now the green section will be determined next week, Monday, when I pull my new iReady reports for this week. And then when we come back from spring break, I'll announce who won this green section. There will be two students. So who out of these two students won the final round and which out of these two students, so one from here, one from here, won this round so they can make it to this section and then these two students will go against each other one more week which is the first week of april and the last winner will be announced the second week of april so that is basically how i am using my i ready march madness now, students who are no longer in the March Madness categories, they are still in competition with each other. So it's not like they're going to be like, oh, I'm no longer there. I don't have to do my lessons. I don't have to pass anything. I don't have to do my time. No, they do because starting this week, I'm going to look for the top three students that have the most lessons passed and we'll see how it goes and i'm going to have little rewards for them so that i can motivate them to get not only their lessons done but the time on i ready as well my students need 45 minutes each week in reading and 45 minutes each week in math so let's see how they do at the end of the week which i will pull the report on monday all right so now i am going to get going and i will see you tomorrow wednesday Good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday. I want to start by saying happy birthday to my niece, Vanessa. Today is her birthday. She turns 11 years old. Tia Mari loves you so, so, so much, and I can't wait to see you, hopefully in the near future, so that I can give you a nice big hug and just shower you with love and hugs and gifts. All right, so today I am getting my day started this morning by getting the do now assignment ready for the students. I'm about ready to pass it out on their desk, but I'm also going to sit down and think of a new seating arrangement because honestly, I'm getting tired of how the desks are arranged in my classroom. That happens to me from time to time. And when that happens, it's time to get my creative juices flowing so I can figure out how I'm going to arrange the desk in a new way and also where I'm going to sit my students. So I'm going to see if I can do it hopefully by the end of today. And if not, we'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Pi Day. I am actually recording that on a separate vlog so you will see it in a different day. But I am so looking forward to today. We start by writing, then we're gonna watch a movie called Racing Extinction or at least the beginning of it. It's a movie by the Discovery Channel along with National Geographic. And we're gonna end the day with some math doing reviews. We're gonna have some interactive math notebook time so we can add some notes that we haven't been able to add yet and all that jazz. 
but I'm going to let you know how it all goes and I'll catch up with you later. It's the end of the day and we did a lot of writing this morning, which I'll show you some examples of the introductions that I wrote on the board along with the one that I actually wrote on my essay. And then we started writing our first body paragraph together, getting students to help me write it. So we were doing it as like a shared write. And tomorrow what the students will do is in the morning, they will go ahead and write the second body paragraph on their own. And we're all going to write the same conclusion so that we can wrap up on that informative essay and we can enjoy the rest of our pie day tomorrow. And then on Friday, they'll take their last timed writing practice test. So then after that, since they didn't have Spanish, I mentioned earlier, we watched Racing Extinction, which is really, really great. It's by the Discovery Channel, like I mentioned before, so I'm not gonna say it again. <laughs> uh, but they really loved it and they learned so much about the impact that we humans have on the planet and how by just doing one thing, whether that is turning off the lights or stopping the water when you brush your teeth or maybe having a meatless Monday, by doing that one thing, we can actually help slow the process of the extinction that is happening with different life forms on our planet. So that was very informative. And then we went ahead and did some math where I basically had them use their last chapter 10 test and update it with a revised chapter 10 test that the district had sent out. So that's basically our day. That's what we ended up doing. So now let me show you these introduction examples and a glimpse into how we are writing our first body paragraph, which we're not done with yet, but just so you can have an idea. Here we go. These are the two introduction examples that I wrote on the board. This one uses like a scenario starting with picture this, and this one is just an overall opener and then the topic sentence. So now let me show you the one that I actually included in my essay. So the first thing we did is we finished adding to our double bubble, which is how we were gathering our evidence. So we add it to the side for the paraglider that we finished rereading. And then on the back, we went ahead and started writing our planner for our essay. So we all decided that we had enough details and evidence to write a paragraph about the design, looking at the differences in the design of both, and a paragraph looking at how they both work. Then to help them kind of see how I come up with my introduction, I started like doing brainstorming of different words that are related to the topic. And that's how I came up with this final introduction for my particular essay. So it has the opener and then it has the topic sentence for this informative essay using words from my prompt, which is different or differently in this case and hang gliders and paragliders. Then we went over to start writing our first body paragraph. So in order to decide what transition to use so that we can move from the introduction to the body paragraph, I had the students help me by brainstorming different ways that we can start our first body paragraph, so different transitions. And once we had this list, these are actually transitions that they came up with and I added it to the list. And then we kind of voted. I didn't write it here because it was like all the hands almost went up. So that's why first things first became our transition for our first body paragraph. And then we started writing. And as you can see, we clearly wrote our topic sentence for this paragraph. First things first, both hang gliders and paragliders have different designs. So we started talking about the design of the hang glider, making sure we include both evidence and elaboration on our part. And all of these sentences talk about the design for the hang glider. And then we have to use a transition to move to the paraglider. So again, we were brainstorming different transitions so that we can go for the contrasting part of the topic that we're writing about. And this is the one that they voted on. So it goes on the other hand, paragliders have a completely different design. And that's what we're gonna pick up tomorrow. And then we're gonna continue writing here. Once we finish talking about paragliders and the design, then everyone will write their own body paragraph for the second body paragraph about how they both work, looking at the different ways that they work. And then we're all going to write the same conclusion sentence together or the same conclusion paragraph together. So that is the writing that we have done for today. So now I'm actually going to work on rearranging all of the desk and figuring out a new configuration. So I wanna show you how the desks look right now. And then once I'm done, I'll show you what I decided to do. Now what I do before I start moving the desk is that I take a sticky note and I write the student's name, just the first name on the sticky note and I put it on the desk so that the students know where their desk is since I don't really use name tags. 
And that way tomorrow morning, even though I may have moved them in a place that I don't want them to be because I'm also gonna do a seating chart later, they can start moving and rearranging to the new seats. And that also gives them an opportunity to clean out their desk. So let me show you the current arrangement in the classroom. So right now in my classroom, I have these like L-shaped desks. I mean, they moved them, so that it's the end of the day. That's what happens. But these L-shaped desks are here. There is a cluster in the middle here and there's another L-shaped desk over here. So that makes up like the back part of the classroom. And then the front is two groups of four, but all in a straight row facing the front of the class. So now let's see what I'm going to do for the new arrangement. All right, so it took me some time, but I finally arranged the classroom in a way that I like for now. We'll see how it works. I always do this when I change my classroom arrangement or even give new seating assignments to the students. I see how it goes, and if I need to make tweaks or changes here and there, then that's what I do. So let me show you how I got it all done and how it looks now. So right now, as you can see, I went ahead and I put all my desk into clusters and I basically put these two teams over here. So this is red and orange team. Green team is in the center and over here we have blue team and then purple team. Now the three drawer cards that the students had at the end of their desk, I decided to just put blue teams and purple teams over here. This is where they keep their chair pockets. And I went ahead and I put their junior grade books in here as well. So we stopped using the rainbow baskets because they were using them for other things. On drawer number two, they keep their reading and writing notebooks. And on drawer number three, they keep their math and science notebooks. So I went ahead and I put red, orange, and green teams, three drawer cards right here in the middle because there was space right here. I also found places where the students can put the chairs at the end of the day because they always ask me when we have a new seating arrangement where the chairs go. So that's where the chairs will go here for these two teams. Green team will have their chair there. And these two teams will have their chairs here, similar to red and orange. So that is pretty much how our classroom looks right now we have a lot of space in the front with our stage and again the desks have the sticky notes with the students names on them so they can find their desk in the morning and clean them out and then i'll tell them where they are now sitting for the new arrangement so let me show you how i came up with where the students are going to sit now i have shared this website in the past it's called happy class and basically the url is happy class app dot com and it's free if you just have one class that you create but they do charge fifteen dollars a year so you can have unlimited students class rosters and room setups so i'm going to return to my app and basically it goes into my class and you can customize your desk and so forth and this is how my current classroom looks Obviously for students' privacy, I went ahead and gave my students like student one, two, three, et cetera, so that I can show you how I work this. But let's say that I have a student that doesn't get along with another student, then I can go to this. And if I say that that student shouldn't sit with this student, then the app knows to make sure that those students don't sit together. If I need the student to always stay in the front of the classroom, they will always sit in the front. You see this little arrow comes up. But let me take it off and maybe I'm going to say that this student back here should always sit in the front. So it'll put that student in the front so that if I customize it, achieving happiness, that student will always be in the front part of the classroom, whatever setup I decide to use. Now let's say that this student should always be sitting with this student then it'll arrange it so that those students can kind of sit together. You can see they both have that little heart on them. Let's say that you want the student to be pinned no matter how many times you click optimize to achieve happiness. Or let's say that you need a student to sit in the back because they prefer to sit in the back. Or you want to just clear the relationship that the student has with other students so that you can start fresh. So that's basically what this app does. It just takes away the time to figure out where you're gonna sit your students or where you're gonna put them, et cetera. You could just click a button and it optimizes the classroom and rearranges it, et cetera. And you can change the seating arrangement and so forth. And then what I do is I go to print this chart and you can definitely print it off your printer. Or what I do is I click cancel and then I do a print screen 
And the way that I do print screen is I hold the control key and the print screen button. And once I do that, I can insert it into PowerPoint and make something like this, where I have all the students sitting. And then what I do is I add this little frame here around the groups, and then I give each team a title so I know where they're sitting. And that is how I maintain it in like my teacher binder or for the substitutes, et cetera. And that's basically how I got it all together. Now, what I did is I formatted the background for a solid color and I chose this color right here, blue for the background. And then this happens to be a box that is curved up here and I just changed the border so it's black. I filled it white so it provides that nice kind of setup and layout. And then I inserted the actual sitting chart from the print screen and basically it looks like this. And then what I do is I select it, I go to format and then I go to crop and then I can crop it and just put it so that it's only showing the desk. And then once I do that, I can go ahead and resize the image. If I click outside of it, I can do it. I can resize the image so that it is centered in my file right here. And then I can go ahead and draw those boxes using the same shape tool right here. And then what I do is I do the background for the shape. Right here, the shape is actually, the shape fill is actually no fill. But what I do is I do change the outline. So I, I can change the outline color right here and then I can change the weight of the outline here. And that's how I created it. And then this just happens to be a little text box. So if I go back to insert, I can go ahead and insert a text box. Or even if I go back to home, the text box is right here, and then I can just move it around, change the font, the size, etc. And then I just gave it a title. This is also another text box that I put here at the top, and I formatted the text. And that is how I created this seating chart. I then save it so that I have an idea for a future configuration if I need inspiration for next school year or later on, etc. So that is how I go ahead and set up my seating chart. All right, so there you have it. I created a new seating arrangement and a new seating chart. You see how I do it. And that is all I have to share for you for today, Wednesday, and the end of this three-day vlog. I'm actually heading out to go to Costco to buy some cookies and some pie for pie day tomorrow, which I can't wait to share with you on the next vlog. All right, so I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello, dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.